Today, I'm finally back with another speedrun. Yes, after three months, we're speedrunning from power one to killing the sign of Etheron in Deep Vulcan, one of the strongest bosses in the entire game. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, but before we get into the video, if you like my content, make sure to subscribe since only about 2% of you guys watching are subscribed. It only takes a second out of your day, so I would greatly appreciate it. Alright, on with the video. For this run, I'm running Frostra and Galebreath as attunements for my character. As well as the Battle Axe, we can invest in the Heavy Weapon and use the Enforcer's Axe as soon as possible. To make my life easier as well, I've decided to pass down the Enforcer's Axe for every run I did. While you technically aren't allowed to pass down items for speedruns, it saves me a bunch of time for resetting runs that don't get the Enforcer Axe from Trial 1. I'm also going into the Echo modifiers and enabling Destined, One Bit, and Hollow. Destined randomly picks their cards for you when you level up, which saves us around 20 seconds each time we power up. If you don't already know the other two, I'll explain why I picked Hollow and One Bit a little later into the run. As always, we're going to spawn at the Trial of One, as it's the fastest way we can gain power level starting from zero. Now, typically I would skip a little bit over this part, explaining some of the details, but you'll notice that I'm doing something a little different. I run past the starting podium, go all the way to the Shrine of Solitude, and before the trial even starts, I'm already done talking to it. Now, you probably have two questions running through your head right now. Either A, what the hell is a Shrine of Solitude, or B, what the hell's going on? Despite the fact that we enabled a modifier that doesn't allow us to freely choose what cards we get, we can still influence what kind of monsters we get with the Shrine of Solitude. For example, by going in and choosing Zero Star Frost Draw mantras, we can guarantee that if we ever get a mantra, it will be a Zero Star Frost Draw one. This is good because it means we don't have to rely on as much luck to get what we want, for the most part. Because there's ideally only two Frost Draw mantras we're looking for in this run. Either Frozen Servants or Warden Blades. There's a 3 out of 5 chance that we wouldn't get either of these mantras when powering up, which would mean an immediate reset. These mantras are a necessity for killing bosses, as you can constantly M1 while casting them. And they can build a ton of damage in the form of Chain of Perfection stacks, or what I'll be referring to as Chain Stacks. Now, one small issue with this Shrine of Solitude strategy I came across is if you're too slow with the dialogue and the trial starts, you'll actually get completely softlocked by the game and be forced to watch as you die. So to prevent this, we have to memorize and quickly input the keybinds for getting a Zero Star Frost mantra. In this case, by inputting the numbers 2, 2, and 1 to quickly select the Zero Star Frost Draw mantra in our next hand and proceed with the Trial of 1. Unfortunately, the run didn't start with the best luck. I got a Roll 2 instead of a Frost Draw mantra as our first Whisper Hand, which kind of sucks because that's only a 1 in 5 chance for that to happen. We also got a Flame Variant Croco, but I didn't take any damage, so we were able to build our Chain Stacks up. Luckily, I also got Warden Blades by Power of 4, and with my Chain Stacks from the Croco, we absolutely obliterated the Angels. I go back to the Shrine and switch my Mantra Hands to Gale Breath Mantras, and the rest of the trial pretty much becomes a cakewalk. The Enforcer, Stone Knight, and the Alpha Megalodon all stood no chance as we absolutely shredded all of them and exited the trial in just over 5 minutes. Our stats are looking pretty great, and we can start trading our stats a bunch with the Ankle Weights and Gale Kata. Now, as soon as we exit the Trial of One, we only have one goal. Level up as fast as possible. Since Etheron is one of the strongest bosses in the game, we're gonna need to find the perfect sweet spot between time spent leveling up and time spent killing bosses. One less power level means more time spent on killing both Chaser and Etheron, but one more power level can mean time wasted. We can quickly kill all of the Ministry NPCs of the castle by spamming our Gale Breath monsters on them, which also gives us a ton of EXP we can use for leveling up. We're also hitting about 5 to 7 of them with Gale Breath monsters, so leveling up Gale isn't much of a problem. Instead of taking the time to grip them all one by one, we can also just launch them all into the water and they'll drown to death. The Hive Mech is also a really strong mob that gives us a lot of event EXP and good loot we can use as well, so it's worth killing whenever we see it. At just about 12 minutes in, we're already power level 11, which is quite a fast pace compared to my other runs. I decided to go all the way to the Crypt of the Unbroken to farm some EXP, but unfortunately, some people have already raided it, so we have to server hop for a bit. Now, usually we go to the Crypt of the Unbroken because it's a good staple for this run. You can trade in many bad mantras you get with the Shrine of Temptation for better ones. 
Plus, you can also farm a good amount of event EXP by killing the Guardians, as they'll give you a chest and a couple of investment points. After clearing out the crypt, I traded one of my bad mantras for a mobility mantra at the shrine. We kill a few other enemies along our way back, and by this point, I've hit power 13 in under 19 minutes. At this point, I start heading to the depths as soon as possible. Thankfully, there's a conveniently placed cliff right here so we can jump all the way off. And because we have the hollow modifier, we instantly get sent to the depths when we die. In case we somehow don't die by falling in the water, the one bit modifier will make us drown in death as a backup. Now, this next part of the run is completely dictated by RNG. Depending on where you spawn in the depths can either save you a lot of time or be a run killer. And it's all because we need to make a deal with the Shrine of Blasphemy. If you aren't aware, the Shrine of Blasphemy gives you 3 power levels in exchange for 5 knowledge and an added flaw to your character, which is absolutely great for what we're going for. But there's one problem. The Shrine of Blasphemy is all the way over here at the Temple of Hearts. So if the game decides to spawn us all the way over here on the opposite side of the map, the time loss is so devastating that it pretty much forces a reset to the run. Thankfully though, we got lucky. Alright, let's look at where we spawned. Oh, this is the best spawn we've had yet. Like, we're literally right there. This depth spawn is the absolute best for this run. It only takes us 18 seconds to get to the Temple of Hearts, and although I have trouble glitching in, we eventually get in. We make a deal with the Shrine of Blasphemy, and now our character is power 16. At this point, we should beeline straight for Etheron as fast as possible, and so we enter layer 2 at 20 and a half minutes in. At this point, I'm still making some small mistakes in the run, but with luck like this, I was absolutely determined to complete this run. Bonekeeper? Absolutely shredded. Generator? Activated. Fearfire Caverns? We head straight there. When entering the caverns though, I had quite a scary encounter. A bounder and a diver were both attacking me at the same time. My HP bar was dwindling by the minute, but I kept calm, backed up a bit, and finished the both of them. I go down, grab the spear to turn it in, and stop to kill these mobs. Now, this is where the good luck of the run starts to fade away. Ideally, we want to kill some of these mobs quickly and see if any of the chests they drop have an Evan Spear hand axe. Unfortunately though, I looked through 4 of these chests total and never got an Evan Spear hand axe this run, which means we have to stick with the Enforcer Axe for killing Atheron. We did get some good equipment though, which I put in my hopper to be equipped as soon as we get to floor 2. The chaser fight was pretty messy on my part. I was arrogantly taking a lot of damage and resetting my chain stacks a lot, but sometimes his attacks would also lag, which was pretty frustrating. After clearing out all of his blood jars for 5 minutes and hitting him a bunch, he eventually dies though. Now, here's where I also made a pretty big mistake in the run. Chaser's chest ends up dropping a Seer enchant stone. Seer is an enchant that applies pen every time you hit your target. But, what's unique about Seer is that it applies pen to your mantras as well. Now, usually I would have immediately put this on my weapon, but at the time, I confused this enchant for solar. Which is a pretty big mistake, since when you enter floor 2, you can't put any enchant stones on your weapon. So, I missed out on a pretty big opportunity. Also, for some reason, this happened. What? How is it hitting me? Oh my gosh, bro, I'm so low. Yeah, so, uh, that was a pretty close call. Now, we don't really have a feasible way of skipping the library maze, but we also need to kill one of the brutes in the maze to heal up a bit. After that though, it's just a pretty simple route we need to follow. We spam space all the way up these ladders, go in the portal, turn on the statue, go in another portal, do some weaving skills with these Kirsten Lancers, turn on the statue in the sewers, dodge all the crawlers, and I decide to grab this medallion chest just in case there's none on the route to Miserablis. I turn on the last statue, and we can finally go talk to Miserablis to get the power boost for the boss. After all of that, we're finally ready to go beat the Scion of Etheron. Since our character is power level 16 with level 1 mantras, 300 HP, and with no feasible sources of healing, it's gonna be quite a hard and long fight with many close calls. Here's how it went. For the first few minutes of the fight, everything was going really well. We got all the bones for the first floor no problem, but when I headed to the second floor, I made some pretty bad mistakes.
What the hell? Things are not going my way. Since I favor Giant Slayer over getting Conditioned Runner, there is no feasible way for me to get my health back for a while. So for over two minutes, I have to stick it out and turn in all the bones on the second and third floor while making little to no mistakes. Thankfully, that's exactly what happened. And we turn in the final bone to stun him for the first cycle. Now, remember when I said chain stacks were important at the start? Well, this is where the importance of chain stacks really come in handy. Since Etheron is stunned for a whole 30 seconds, we need to quickly head over and build our chain stacks as quickly as possible. We can achieve this by spamming mantras like Gale Punch and Warden Blades, doing good damage and building three chain stacks every time we use one. This means that by the last five or so seconds, we should nearly have the two times damage buff that we can utilize to kill the boss faster. On top of the fact that we should have the Giant Slayer talent and the damage buff from Miserablus. Now, despite this, the boss has a lot of health, and I mean a lot, so it won't go down without a fight. Because these next four minutes were some of the most stressful minutes of my life. Oh my gosh. Oh, no two cycle. Wait, keep doing that. Keep doing that. Oh my, my FPS is tanking, bro. There's so many projectiles, it's tanking. Please do one more. Ah! Oh, it's all the way across, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't have gotten it, then. He's guaranteed dead here. Come on! Wait, my Warden's Blades doesn't reach? No way! What? Wait, he might not die then. Oh no. Please die. Let's go! Come on! Yes, let's go! <laughs> Sub 54! Oh my god! With a time of just under 54 minutes, I completed one of my most impressive speedruns yet. Big thanks to Terminating Taco and Rain underscore SQ. I greatly appreciate your guys' support. If you enjoy content like this, make sure to subscribe to help show your support on the channel and have a great rest of your day.